And the topic is anointed for good works. Anointed for good works. From the passage we read, we saw how Jesus got anointed by God with the Holy Ghost and with power before he went about doing good. Remember, Jesus told the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that they should tarry in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father comes. And when the Holy Ghost come, they will receive power. When the Holy Ghost come, they will receive power. And they will go and be a witness. Be a witness. Now, it gives us understanding that what this place is saying is the Holy Spirit is poured, released on us to go about doing good release on us to consecrate us to separate us to set us outside or apart for God's glory and power and nature and strength to become the expression of our activities as we go proclaiming or witnessing for him the anointing is on us. The Holy Spirit is poured on us to consecrate us, to make our life, to become the nature of God, the display of God's good pleasure in, in order for God to use us to express himself, to enable us to serve him better and to make us to represent good works to make for words he so desire to make for his will to become the actual situation here on earth here on earth I declare whatsoever it is resisting the will of God in any fragment or in any department of your life in every facet of your life in the name and of our name I cause that in the name of Jesus the will of God becomes the expression of your life. These days, many of us see times of learning as if it's a waste of time. Time of tarrying, time of hiding in his presence, time of seeking his face, time of praying, time of waiting on the Lord. And some of us see it as if we are wasting our time. Friend, it's not a waste. At all, it's not a waste. That is what we and God cook is on in the upper room, sacred place. In the sacred place. That is where he pours his spirit. Amen. Amen. If you look at it, the disciples needed this authority before they were empowered to go out to all the nations. Remember, Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and 19 Jesus instructed them that all powers in heaven and on earth and all powers okay all, says, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 says go ye therefore and teach all nations very important what you lay in the secret place it is known for you to use it for yourself. Use it to go out. To do good works. It is the spirit of God is released on you. To go out like Joseph did. Even when he didn't do it in his own accord. But he went out. There he shined for God. He decided for the will of God. Not the will of anybody. All the men of old. The same strength. Paul went out everywhere. Even when he came last, he became a dominant figure because he discovered God's will and he decided that it is the will of God alone that must prevail in every matter. Everywhere he went, he 
the importance of the anointing number one the anointing enables and empowers us in our work for God Acts chapter 10 verse 38 Jesus was enabled and empowered to, for the work God assigned him to do and he went doing it without restraint Holy Ghost came on him even Jesus needed the Holy Ghost not to talk of us we need him much more the power from a high we need it even the disciples they couldn't do anything until the Holy Ghost came but two it enables us to be productive or to produce fruits the fruits of the Spirit. It is the power from our heart that releases the nature of God into our spirit to produce the effect of the nature of God. It is the presence of God in us, the Holy Spirit in us, that the only place the Holy Spirit relates with in our life is our spirit, not our emotion, not our body, not our soul. But when the Holy Spirit relays or commune with our spirit, our spirit brings it to the understanding of our mind. Understanding belongs to the mind. The effect and creep, the clarity of his purpose, until your spirit brings it to the understanding of your mind, you can't capture it. It enables us witness effectively. How? When the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, he was going to the synagogue, to the temple to pray. And on his way, he saw a man lay. And he said, Silver and gold had done what I have given. And Peter declared it. The Holy Spirit made it possible. And the man stood. There was a result. Now, that didn't just stop there. That result was challenged by the authorities. And they could not do anything to make the man to return to the former way. Because God is able to sustain the result it brings from your life. Number four, it confirms that we have God's authority. It confirms that we have God's authority. all that God saved us to do. It confirms that we have God's authority to carry out all that God saved us to do. The next one is it reveals God. It reveals God unfailing kindness and faithfulness. All that he did were good. All were good. He did good. That's why I said, anointed for good works. From today, by the reason of the Spirit of God upon our life, everything you do will be good. You will sell. You will be on top. You will be the head, not the tail treasures, nations will be open for you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus because God is too faithful to fail he's kind look at what happened there he backed up Jesus all true and true he backed up the disciples all true and true look at John, the beloved even when they tried to kill him by throwing into a palm, I mean, a, a, a oil fry, I mean, a palm, I mean, is it? Fry pan. And it was good, he didn't die. He was thrown into the wilderness of Patmos. There he received the word of God for the end time. I know until you finish your goal, no, no one will cut you short. I declare no one will die young hair. I said, no one will die young hair. In the name of Jesus. Number six. It reveals the nature and the heart of God because it reveals the nature 
and the heart of God. If you look at what happened here, everywhere he went, healing all that we oppressed of the devil. It, it takes only God to do that. It takes only God. Ah, what happened? Inside fire, they were not consumed. What happened? Inside the den of lion, Daniel was not consumed. That is God. He made all. He decided what to do with them by time. As you find yourself in any location, may the Lord count on those locations to decide for you. To decide your glory. How do we live in the anointing? I'll just say this quickly. How do we live in the anointing? Number one, you must be in, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. That you must be a lover of righteousness and a hater of evil or wickedness. You must hate wickedness and love righteousness. Number two, you must be harmless and undefiled. Joseph wouldn't want to be defied and yet didn't fight her. Daniel did not raise an issue against those that planned against him and yet they were, come, they were, they were dealt with. Mordecai only raised issue on the, on the decree that was made. Not, he didn't report that Haman, but the Lord turned the gain against Haman because he was a principal planner. So, if you want God's will to be the actual life you live, be a lover of righteousness and hate wickedness, you will discover that what you love becomes your life. Number three, to walk in the anointing, you have to be full of the goodness of the Lord. All he, where he went, all that he went, wherever he went, in that 38, everything we are good. You must be full of the goodness of God. Now, Peter said, This good thing we have done, you have not accused us of a wrong. This man is standing as a witness. We didn't do anything evil, but we, this man was restored back to life, stopped from begging. So, why are you persecuting us? May your good speak for you in the name of Jesus. Then, to walk in the anointing, you have to delight, delight to do God's will. Number three, to walk in the anointing, you have to be full of the goodness of the Lord. All he, where he went, all that he went, wherever he went, in that 38, everything we are good. You must be full of the goodness of God. Now, Peter said, this good thing we have done, you have not accused us of a wrong. This man is standing as a witness. We didn't do anything evil. But we, this man was restored back to life, stopped from begging. So why are you persecuting us? May your good speak for you. In the name of Jesus. Then to walk in the anointing, you have to delight, delight to do God's will. Find delight to do the will of God. And the word of God should dwell richly in you. In order to know the delightful things that God desires. The word of God has to dwell richly in you. To walk in the anointing, you have, you need to have eternity in view. Knowing that all we see here, they are not real things. Life, the life comes from above. Live your life as you set your affection on things above. As you show compassion, as you are kind to people, as you show charity to people, let it be dominant. Everything you offer, know that you are doing it for eternity. You are doing it to last, not just for the moment. Amen. Having all of this understanding. It's my prayer from today. The 
mightiness of the anointing of the presence of God of the grace of God of the glory of God because the result of our oppressions in everywhere we go the spirit of God will show us spots the spirit of God will show the might of God the power of God the glory of God the anointing that breaks the yoke I release it on you now receive it in the name of Jesus everywhere you go everywhere he went he was doing good and he healed as many that were possessed that were of the devil oppressed of the devil from today that becomes your effect that becomes your life that becomes your life 